Hello everyone, welcome to the video, Salt here. So today we are going to be going over Necros Prime. Now before we uh, get into the build, just something about me and how I do my builds for Warframes. Um, I usually do like one to four hour Steel Path Survivals and like one to four hour Steel Path Disruptions. I have done level cap, but I don't really like going to level cap. It limits you on what you can use. You really have to use rolling guard. You really have to use invisibility frames or play very specific frames like uh, Revenant. So I don't necessarily go to level cap a lot. I have, but I don't, I don't play that a lot. I don't really enjoy it. So most of my builds are set up for like one to four hour survivals or like one to four hour disruptions. I mean, yes, you can get to level cap in less than four hours on disruption, but it requires, you know, a little bit of sweatiness and also very specific maps and usually a team. So by yourself, four hours on disruption doesn't get you very high. So, okay. Um, another thing about me too is, uh, and it's going to pertain to this video, is I'm a Necros main. And I've been a Necros main for, since the, since I've started playing the game. Um, I have two to 3,000 hours on only Necros, uh, which I think is, you know, uh, it, I'm, I'm just going to guess here. It's probably, I'm probably one of the, the people with the most hours uh, on Necros in the game. There probably, there, there probably is a few people that are over me, but I think I'm, I'm close to the top for, uh, for Necros experience. I've done a lot of weird builds with Necros. I've tried a lot of different things, and so today I'm going to... I'm going to try to uh, help people and maybe explain some of those uh, uh, things. So let's get into Necros here. Okay, so uh, Necros has a few abilities. His uh, passive is going to restore health when an enemy dies within 10 meters. It's going to be really good because we're going to be using an augment. We'll get to this after, called the spoil. And that switches um, one of his abilities to using health instead of energy. So that combo is really nice with it. Um, this is a subsumed ability. So Necros does not have pulled normally. So going over Necros's original four abilities, this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. And uh, I think I'm allowed to have this hot take because I've spent a lot of time on Necros, but this is going to be a little bit of a hot take. Um, I don't like three out of four of his abilities. I really only like Desecrate. So his first one, Soul Punch, is uh, kind of like a CC light ability where you Soul Punch an enemy and it puts like a debuff thing on the enemy where when he dies in a certain amount of time, he becomes your specter. So... It's a good ability. It has uh, like potential to be really good. The problem is most of the time the people you want to make into specters are those Eximuses, and Soul Punch, do, you, they can't be affected by it while they have the Overguard shield up. So with Soul Punch, you, you almost have this like little mini game with Eximuses where you're doing damage to that Overshield or Overguard, and you have like a brief window when the Overguard ends to where you like one shot them, where you have to like quickly press one and put Soul Punch on them. And so for that reason, Soul Punch is really, really finicky and I don't like it. I mean, I, I wish it would, it could be applied over Overguard. So that's why uh, I'm taking it off myself here. Terrify is not bad. It's a good ability actually, it's quite good. It uh, strips armor. Uh, you have to be at a certain, um, strength to be able to strip the armor of course so it does require you to invest in strength on your necros where a lot of his good things about him don't really need strength and so you're you're investing just because of terrify to get it to strip it makes enemies run away and on a loot frame that's not necessarily good and so you're having to combo it with things um, that either pull enemies in, like what I'm using pull here, or uh, abilities that slow. Yeah, there's an augment for Terrify that slows enemies by a bit. Um, Terrify is good, though, but it has to be built around using it. It's not something that's easily just used normally. So I also don't use Terrify on this particular build. I actually have two Necros builds we'll go over today. His third, Desecrate, this is the one I do use. So Desecrate is going to um, get have a 56, or actually 54, sorry, ooh, 54. 54% chance to get um, some extra loot from dead enemies. Now, 
it's important to know about enemy decomposition and how like that works. Uh, you don't have to know like the super intricacies of it. You just have to know that um, like normal enemies decompose after about 10 or 15 seconds. Now that's whether your if your graphics are really like on low settings and you don't even have you know corpses being able to be seen after a certain amount of time, that's okay. The, the game basically just puts invisible entities on the ground that last for those 10 or 15 seconds, and you can still desecrate them. Um, but there are effects in the game that decrease that decomposition time. And so it's important to know with Necros uh, that um, things like um, burning enemies, corro corroding enemies, I think radiation like dissolves enemies also, that would decrease the decomposition time. One of the biggest culprits of this, and it's important to know, even though it's a completely different Warframe, is Nova. And Nova's, uh, I believe it's called Molecular Prime, it's the one that uh, uh, she either slows or speeds up enemies. So, and it's important to know because a lot of times you're going to be mixing a Speed Nova with Necros. So now enemies affected by Molecular Prime from Nova are going to have their decomposition timer decreased to three seconds. So um, those bodies are going to decompose after three seconds. Um, now, Necros can desecrate uh, three bodies every second. So three bodies every second he can desecrate. So if you and your buddy, like, you know, you, your little buddy Billy is bringing in his, his speed Nova and it's just you and him, you're going to go farm some resources, you should be fine. You, you know, Necros desecrates at such a quick pace, three bodies per second, that even you and your little buddy Billy, you know, you'll be fine. You're not going to be missing any desecrates on, on those uh, enemies. But if you're going into a map specifically to farm and you're like with a real sweaty group, um you may be missing bodies. You know, you may you may have such a high kill per second potential that your desecrate can't keep up with enemies that are affected by molecular prime because molecular prime is only gonna is gonna decrease that decomposition timer to three seconds. So and that comes to the second part of, of this explanation where, you know, hey, does Necros stack with each other? Well, Necros does not stack with each other. If Necros has desecrated something, another Necros cannot desecrate that same uh, item. But there is a reason to bring multiple necroses sometimes. And that's if you can't keep up with desecrations. So, you know, in that situation where you have the crazy uh, speed nova and you have like that crazy kill per second potential, if um, your necros can't keep up with the desecrates, if you bring a second necros, uh, he'll, he'll also be desecrating uh, bodies. And because he's not desecrating the same bodies you're desecrating, you'll be desecrating all of the bodies on the map. Um, but that's like in a real sweaty situation. I think normally you don't really need two necroses unless you're really, really sweaty farming. Um, I mean, and some people like sweaty farming. I like sweaty farming, so sometimes I'll do that. But <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, three death crates per second. I think I got everything. I think I explained everything about that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed. So desecrate normally drains uh, energy, and it can be very expensive. I mean, three desecrates per second, and uh, if you're using him to farm, you're killing things very quickly usually. And so it spends a lot of energy. And so to alleviate that, there's an augment that we're going to use called despoil. So despoil is going to make it cost health instead. So, and it's, it's honestly not too bad. I mean, Necros, just because of his passive, you're going to be restoring so much health. And then we have other ways to get health back too, and we'll go over that uh, also. So it's much better to spend health on desecrating enemies than it is on energy. So that's very important um, for the desecrate is to use despoil. Okay, now we get into Shadows of the Dead. And again, I'm going to have a little bit of a hot take here. So I don't like Shadows of the Dead. Um, it's a visual blocker to your entire team. It is a DPS debuff to you and your team who end up shooting the shadows instead of enemies. Um, and it requires you most of the time, I mean, you don't have to, but most of the time if you're using Shadows of the Dead, you're also going to be using the Augment Shield of Shadows that gives you a little bit of uh, damage reduction. 
And so it's also taking a mod slot on you. And it's also one of the longest casting times in the entire game. It actually might be the longest casting time in the entire game. So it's just... I know a lot of people like Shield of Shadows on Necros. Um, but again, I think I'm allowed to have this hot take that I think Shield, Shield of Shadows and Shadows of the Dead are very bad. It also depends where what you're doing this on, too, because certain content... Like, if you have ever done Deimos open world and pressed your four button and all of a sudden seven of those juggalous giant dick monsters come up and just cover the entire screen and you cannot see anything it's absolutely horrible so there's also pretty big enemies in the um the new content whispers so it's it's just it's a visual nuisance um, even as a Necros, and even as a Necros main that has played Necros for two or 3,000 hours, I find myself shooting at my own specters. I see teammates shooting at the specters. It's just an absolute nuisance. Uh, Shield of Shadows of the Dead. Um, and also Soul Punch. Soul Punch does one... Uh, it brings one specter up, where this brings seven specters up. So, it, it's... You know, on paper... There's, like, paper and functionality. On paper... Shadows of the Dead and Shield of Shadows seems amazing. It's, oh, it's damage reduction. I have these specters. They're going to be taking shots for me. They're going to, you know, stop enemies from shooting at me and my teammate. They're going to do some damage. But in actual functionality, it is an absolute nuisance. I, I cannot stand, as a Necros main, I cannot stand playing with other Necroses that use Shadows of the Dead. So, and for that reason, I don't, I subsume out Soul Punch, and I almost never press Shadows of the Dead. There are some extreme circumstances where I will press Shadows of the Dead, and that's why I've left this one on instead of Soul Punch. So if I'm in a, de in a defense mission, and we are absolutely like tanking, like we're, we're doing completely horrible, and the defense target's about to die, maybe I'll cast Shadows of the Dead. That way I can get enemies to shoot at them instead of the defense target. That's pretty much it. That's the only time I'll ever press this button. So... And again, I know that's a little bit of a hot take. I know there are a lot of Necros mains that, are, that love Shield of Shadows, and I understand that. It's just me, myself, I cannot stand that uh, ability. So I have, I have two uh, Necros builds here. They're both very good, but there's one that I believe is better than the other. So I have my Necros main, which I believe this one is the best Necros. But this is not the one that I played with the most. The one that I have most of my two or 3,000 hours in is this one here. Um... This one here is extremely powerful in endurance content. If you wanted to, to stay in a mission for uh, like three, four, five hours, then this build will be the one. Now, it can't do level cap because, of course, for level cap, you need to play very specific Warframes, right? You have to put Rolling Guard on everything. So it can't do level cap. But it could still do um, Steel Path Endurance up to, like, a few thousand leveled enemies, maybe, like, four or five thousand level enemies. <clears throat> this one here, the one that I believe is the better Necros, cannot do very high endurance. This one here is more of a one or two hour Steel Path and still, until it starts hurting. And you're finding yourself, like, dying a lot and things. Uh, but why do I think it's the best? And that's because it has the most uh, loot-gathering potential. Now, I believe if you're playing Necros, you should be playing it to gather loot. There's not really anything else that Necros provides. He doesn't uh, provide much to the team. You look at the other loot frames in the game. You look at uh, Korra. Korra has a whip build. She can, you know, do other things. Hydroid has all kinds of weird stuff now with his rework. Um... Atlas loot frames, I mean, if you see an Atlas loot frame, give them a plat, you know, invite them to your dojo, give them a plat. They're, they're having hard times. They've, they've always kind of struggled. Um, but, like, for the most part, the other loot frames in the game, they have other things that they can do. Uh, Necros, not really. Necros just gets loot. That's, that's pretty much it. And so I think the Necros main, even though this can't do a four or five hour uh, steel path survival, this collects loot better. So I'm going to show both builds, though, because the, the Lord Necros build is extremely powerful. Uh, it just does not collect loot as quickly. Okay, let me stop running my mouth and go through the mods. So we have... Um, also, keep in mind, I have misformas all over the place. You may not even need two Umbral Formas on your, your Necros if you build this. 
Um, and it's just because I've played Necros for so long that I have switched my builds up so much that I have misformers all over the place. So, so if if you're building this out yourself, like start formating the cheap stuff first. Like don't don't start by throwing in a number of forma and then see how far you can go without ha without having to use a number of forma. Okay, umbral vitality for health, umbral fiber for armor. Uh, they're a set bonus, so they're going to kind of boost each other up. So you get a little bit more health and a little bit more armor because of the set bonus. Health conversion is going to give you um, almost 1,500 uh, armor. I think it's like 1,350 with three stacks. You are going to be taking a lot of health damage, so you cannot bank on the fact that you will have 1,350 armor. Most of the time, you'll actually only be at two stacks of this, just because you are going to be taking a lot of health damage. Um, so most of the time, you're only going to get 900 armor instead of 1350 out of this. So just keep that in mind. Adaptation for more damage resistance. Despoil, like we explained before, this is going to help our uh, Desecrate to not use energy. And it's going to be using um, uh, health instead. And now we have three ranged mods. We have Augur Reach for 30% ability range. We have Stretch for 45% ability range. And we have overextended for 90% ability range. This also gives us negative strength, but we don't use strength for anything. We don't intend to actually press Terrify, so we don't actually need strength on this build. So that's why we're going with uh, range mods. <clears throat> Something that's also important with Necros, because it's a loot frame, and it's more important with Necros than any other Warframe. Uh, Necros, you are usually going to be playing with a team. You, you know, when, when you're with a Saren, or when you're playing Saren, you don't really need to know other Warframe's abilities. You're just kind of doing your own thing. With Necros, it's important to actually know what other loot frames can do. Now, um, on our Necros, we're going to be using pull. This is going to pull enemies to us, and it's going to, uh, to, to just help us cluster enemies up and, and then be able to, uh, to kill them all efficiently. So... Um, like Korra's, for instance. Korra needs a lot of other stats. She needs duration. She needs strength. She doesn't really have um, the opportunity to plop three uh, ranged mods like we have here. So she's not a good candidate to have pull. Hydroid scales too well on range. If you had three range mods on Hydroid, you would have tentacles three rooms over playing Helldivers. You, it, it would be ridiculous. You, you would actually lose out on, on loot potential because there would be things in other rooms uh, in tentacles. And so Hydroid's not a good one to also um, have like max pull range. Uh, he also needs other things now too because of his rework. He, he's not just a, a duration range frame anymore. Um, you know, and then... Uh, Nova, Speed Nova. Speed Nova usually wants to run either no range, like, like you know, neutral, or she wants to run minimum range because her uh, null stars. So that leaves you as Necros out of the whole, like, loot frame trinity as the best uh, Warframe to be using pull. Now, why are we using pull over other abilities? Um, and it comes down to uh, crowd control. So... Crowd control abilities most of the time cannot supersede each other. So if something is affected by one crowd control ability and someone else casts another crowd control ability, it's usually not going to affect the enemies that are in the first CC. So, like, I'll compare pull to larva, for instance, because they're, they're both very similar. Larva pulls enemies also. The difference is, is that larva keeps them in the crowd control until they're dead or until the larva expires. Well, if you're going to be pulling into a Korra cage, now again, we're not Korra, we're Necros, but you have to understand other Warframes when you're playing Necros. So if you're going to be pulling into a Korra cage um, with Larva, the Korra cage doesn't have opportunity to actually attach and pull those enemies into the cage because they're still stuck in Larva. Well, pull, it has a brief CC where it just snags and pulls enemies really quickly towards you. And that's it. That's the end of the CC there. It doesn't actually keep the enemies like suspended or anything like that. It just pulls it into a little blob. Bam, done. CC over. And so the Korra cage can quickly snag up those enemies that you've pulled. 
So that's why we're using pull over other uh, crowd control abilities that gather enemies. All right. Um, let's go over the two on the top here. Cutting Drift is going to be for more ability range. And then the Aura mod, I'm going to go for Corrosive Projection, but you can pretty much go with whatever you want. There's not a great uh, Aura for Necros. If you're using Necros as a melee frame, you'd probably want to go with Steel Charge. Um, I'm going to be using a Shotgun on him, so like another option would be Shotgun Amp. It's not very strong. It's very small damage, but like it is an option. Uh... Yeah, I mean, there's not really great options here for, for Necros for the Aura slot. I'm going to go with pro Corrosive pro Projection, because even though I'm not really going to go for a full armor strip with Terrify, it might help other people on my team that, that need to reach their uh, breakpoints quicker. And then for the two uh, Arcanes, on health and armor setups, I like to shoot for 2,000 armor, 2,000 health minimum on Steel Path Endurance. And so right now we only have 1,300 health. That's not enough for me. And so I'm using Arcane Blessing. That's going to boost us closer to like, I think it's like 2,500 maybe at the end we'll be at. So that's going to be perfect for us. And then um, not 2,500 just from Arcane Blessing, just, but with the Arcane Blessing buff and my 1,300, it'll be at about 2,500. And then for our second Arcane, I'm going to be going for Arcane Grace for more health regeneration. This is not necessarily needed. I switch the second arcane all the time. So if you find another arcane that you really like, uh, you could just plop it over arcane grace. I, I, I switch this all the time. I'll take arcane grace off. I'll use another arcane here. And then I'll have like a bad experience where I really needed health regen. And I'll put arcane grace back on. So you choose whatever you want for the second arcane slot. But I, I use arcane grace here. And that's it for um, this necros build here. This is the one that I believe is the best one. So I'm going to do just a quick, I'm going to show off the second one too, but I'm, I want to do this one first. So I'm going to just show off a quick like five or ten minute like uh, loot gathering farm and show what this can do. Now with Necros, um, well let's go over the Archon Shards too, but we're going to go over all the other like external combo wombo kind of stuff. So uh, Archon Shards, for that build is going to be one effectiveness on energy orbs, two for armor, because remember, we can't bank on that uh, health conversion giving us 1350 armor. We can really only bank on it giving us 900 consistently. So this is going to make up for that other stack that sometimes we won't have. And then the other two, I'm going to use health. You don't really need more health, but I'm just going to put more health here. Um, but at the end of the day, none of these are required for this build. You don't actually need any of these for this Necros build. So you could choose whatever shards you want. The second Necros build that I will show in a bit will have required Archon shards. So this one does not have required Archon shards. This is just what I use. You're going to want to uh, combo Necros with a slash heavy weapon. Um, keep in mind decomposition times on bodies. So weapons that are high heat corrosive, and I think radiation is the other one too, um, they can decrease uh, or increase decomposition time. So like, you don't want to go too crazy with uh, fire weapons, corrosive weapons, or radiation. You can still desecrate those bodies. It's just that uh, you're going to have less time to do it. So I'm going to go with a boar. I really like the boar. Um, the reason you want a high slash weapon is because cutting body parts into pieces gives more chance for those body parts to also be desecrated. So each individual body part, part can be desecrated. Um, that's something I didn't mention before. So, And that's why you want a very high slash weapon. Probably the best weapon to do this with, but it's not, a one, not one I'm using, is going to be the Nagantaka. The Nagantaka is absolutely disgusting with the amount of slash damage it does absolutely monstrous now with pull pull groups everything in kind of like a big ball and the nagantaka is a little bit of like a precision weapon so even though it punches through it doesn't necessarily kill everything in that ball and that's why i don't really use the nagantaka um just because it doesn't quickly kill that ball that like you pull enemies into where the board does because the board is a shotgun it has a little bit more of like a circle like effect where it like where it's hitting uh 
like it's pellets. So the boar is a little bit quicker to kill that ball, but of course it's less of a slash weapon than Nagantaka is. The Nagantaka is absolutely a slash monster. Um, I'm going to be using a Furus and not a Furus built out for Incarnate. I'm going to be using the Furus built out for my utility Furus. This is the one that uses Winds of Purity for lifesteal. This is just going to uh, be a, a utility item if I need to restore my health. If I find my health in a really shitty stage, state, I could switch from the boar to my Furus, shoot a few shots, be at full health, end of story. That's it. I'm not really using it to do damage, although it's still going to do a lot of damage. The Ripkas, um, we're using this. And don't worry too much about this build. I made this build like two years ago. It's probably not even the right build uh, nowadays. But we're using the Ripkas because of Amalgam, Ripkas True Steel. This is an Amalgam mod. And if you read it here, so this gives crit chance. This is just for the melee. But plus 20% reload speed on shotguns. You have that little effect that affects our boar. And then on the bottom, plus 100% gore chance. That's more body parts. So that's why we're using Amalgam, Ripkas True Steel. Because the combo is really nice with, um, with Necros. And of course, Amalgam, Ripkas True Steel means you have to use the Ripkas. Uh, we're using a Nairu as a uh, focus school just for more armor. Uh, that's really it. And then for the pet, Smita Kavat. There's really no other option for Necros. If you're playing Necros, you should have Smita Kavat. On the second Necros build, it's very energy hungry. And so I guess maybe you could use Death Cube because Death Cube's really good for energy generation. But even on that one, I would probably say Smita Kavat. If you're not using Smita Kavat on Necros, you're probably doing it wrong. So you really need that Smita Kavat. You know, you're, you're, the whole purpose of using Necros is extra loot. Smita Kavat gives extra loot. So that's why we use it. Okay. So let me make sure I went on to the correct build here. And we'll just do a little quick uh, five or ten minute um, resource gathering on Steel Path. Show this off. So most of the time you're going to do your resource gathering on um, Dark Sectors. So I'm going to go deep, deep in Uranus on Asser. So it's a dark sector, and it's really good for, I believe this is the one that's good for um, uh, polymer bundles. Distract the infested while a Valentino operative hunts for supplies. Right, I'm going to use my little energy pad just so I can fill up on energy right now. Hit that there. Cast my desecrate. And then I'm just going to find a good area. I'm going to find a nice little area. This is not terrible right here. Pull all these enemies and just shoot the ball. You need to repull them, just repull them. It's super cheap. Pull is very cheap. Now, something to know about pull is not 360. You have to actually kind of look where it's like 180 ish, where it'll it'll uh, pull things like in the side of your periphery, but it's not going to uh, pull things behind you. So just keep that in mind. If you're in an area, um, if you're in an area where enemies can come behind you, you might have to once in a while look behind you and pull. And that's really it. You just keep pulling in a ball. If you were with a Korra, you, your Korra would basically just have her cage set up here, and you just pull into her cage. I think I'll, I'll only do five minutes because this will be uh, very boring sitting here watching me uh, pull enemies for five minutes. But I believe this is the best way to play Necros. This is my... This is what I have settled on as the best Necros build. Um, it is not as good as the one I'm going to show you for Endurance, though. The one I'm going to show you for Endurance is the one that I used most of the time for my two or 3,000 hours. It is an extremely strong, uh, disgustingly strong uh, Necros uh, crowd control frame. This one, not so much. This one is just a uh, pull, get loot, end of story. No, I have my incarnate mode available, but just remember your incarnate mode is going to have heat. And so it might um, uh, burn enemies, which will affect the uh, the time of uh, decomposition. Although I'm not, I don't think I'm getting like over three kills per second, so it's not too bad. Remember, pull will not affect uh, Eximuses, so you might want to, you know, shoot a few shots into an Eximus, and then you can pull them. 
Or just let him kind of wander up to you. Just keep keep killing little trash. Let the Eximus wander up. And then, and then deal with him. So this is a very good combo with Korra. Because you're going to be pulling right into her cage. Uh, if, you're with a, if you're with a Hydroid that doesn't have like a shitload of range. He's more like focused on other stats. Like he could have like a little puddle of uh, tentacles right here. That you could be pulling into. That's also really cool. I think Korra might be a little bit of a better combo. Um, you know, and of course, if you have uh, the rare Loot Frame Atlas on your team, uh, you want to go to Dojo afterwards and, you know, throw them a plat because they're, they're having hard times Atlas as a Loot Frame. Around three minutes, two minutes, two minutes more, and we'll we'll roll out, and I'll show that second uh, necro spilled off. And again, pull does not keep them in a crowd control. It literally just pulls them. They're briefly crowd controlled during the pull, and then they're right out of the crowd control. So they can immediately get picked up by the by that core cage. That's the important part. If you were to use a CC that just keeps them in the core cage, but they're still technically not affected by the core cage, um, I don't believe core is going to produce extra loot because of it. They have to be in the core cage, like actually affected by it to get uh, the extra loot. So that's why pull is amazing. And you are the prime candidate as Necros to have that max range pull on. Because if it was if it was a Hydroid that had three range mods on, oh my goodness. He'd be playing Warframe uh, 2 in the other room. It'd be like in the future, playing future uh, Warframe games. He scales too well off of Strength Hydroid. <laughs> Have the acolyte come. We'll kill the acolyte, and then we'll head to extraction. So you've kind of you've kind of seen how how this works. Oh, the other cool thing with pull uh, that I didn't mention is it doesn't affect um, gunplay. So like you could still shoot. Um, I think you can reload too with pull out. So that's the other cool thing. Like, I could still keep pressing my one here like while I'm just uh, uh, blasting at him. So, all right, uh, let's head to extraction. So, I mean, five minutes, we're at 700 kills. That's, that's really good. It's pretty quick. And if you're with other uh, Warframes, like Koras, Hydroids, um, poor little Atlas uh, loot frames, um, you'll be at higher. that Smita Kavat double the Steel Essence. That's why it's important to bring a Smita because you get you get double resources a lot of times with Smita. I should have only gotten four there. I do have a booster, but booster should only get me to four. So Smita doubled that for me. And that affects all resources for a whole two minutes. It's a huge buff. So, okay. I'm going to go back in here and we're going to go over that second Necros build. The Necros build that I actually spent most of my time as a Necros main playing. So we're going to Lord Necros here. Okay, so this build is extremely powerful, but it has less range, so you're not able to um, desecrate like an entire room. You're desecrating. It's still a pretty big area. I mean, look, the desecration is still what like forty meters. So I mean, if it's a smaller room, you can still hit most of the room. Um, this is a triple umbral build. So in triple umbral builds, you'll, you'll almost certainly have to use two umbral formas. So it's going to be umbral vitality, umbral fiber, and umbral intensify. Uh, they're sets, so they're all going to boost each other up. We're still using despoil because despoil is amazing. That doesn't change. We're using blind rage to get a giant boost in strength. So we have umbral intensify for 77 strength, and we have blind rage for 99 ability strength. 
Um, it does have a negative ability efficiency, so everything's going to be very expensive to cast. Adaptation, we're still using for damage resistance. Health conversion, we're still using for added armor. Uh, and then we're using Stretch as a range mod. So instead of the, all three strange mods, you know, like Augur Accord, Stretch, and I think it was Narrow Minded, uh, we're just using Stretch here. Okay, we're using Cutting Drift still for ability range. We're still using Corrosive Projection. There's still not a great uh, Aura mod. You can choose whatever Aura mod you like, but I'm using Corrosive Projection. And we're still using Arcane Blessing to make sure that we have uh, over 2,000 he uh, health. With Arcane Blessing, um, we're probably going to be at like 2,500 uh, health. And then here we go, Arcane Eruption. Arcane Eruption is a disgusting combo with Gloom. So we're using Gloom as our Subsume. So Gloom is going to slow everything down, and it's going to give us Lifesteal. That Lifesteal is basically what makes us um, an Endurance Frame, because it's very hard to actually die on this build unless you're reloading. So... It, it, as long as you're shooting, you're not going to die. Unless Malice puts a mag bubble on you. If Malice puts a mag bubble on you, you could kill yourself. But other than that, it's very hard to die on this build. So, Gloom slows enemies around you. Because we're using two high ability strength mods, it's a 95% slow. They are almost stopped. The entire map is almost stopped. Well, not the entire map. Your stretch is not super uh, big. But a good range, right? 25.6 meters is just completely paused around you. And we combo that with Arcane Eruption. So anytime you pick up an energy orb, it knocks enemies on their butt. And, you know, and then they get back up. Simple as that. They get knocked on their butt and they get back up. Usually, it usually takes about a second and a half. Well, with a 95% slow... That knock on their butt from Arcane Eruption turns into like a 30-second crowd control. So it is a disgusting combo uh, with Necros here. <clears throat> now, the thing is, is that Gloom is not Necros' ability. And Arcane Eruption can be put on anyone. So this is not necessarily a Necros-specific combo. You can kind of do this combo on anyone. Um, the reason it does pretty well on Necros is because you don't use most of your abilities most of the time. Like, even on this build, there's not a big reason to press Terrify, because we're using Blind Rage. Terrify is so expensive that we usually don't want to press Terrify. Um, this is costing us health instead of energy, and we don't really press 4 at all. And so the only thing in this entire build that takes energy is Gloom. Um, so Necros is a good candidate for this uh, Gloom setup with Arcane Eruption because this is going to require a lot of energy. And if we don't have any other abilities that take energy, we can just focus on that. So I want to show this off, though, and I want to show how disgusting this build is. So now this build, you really do need Archon Shards to, uh, to use this build at its full potential because it is extremely energy hungry. So you will definitely need an effectiveness on energy orbs. You probably even want to use two of these. You probably want to use two yellows for effectiveness on energy orbs. You probably want to use one violet Archon Shard. The violets have a uh, choice that gives it kind of like a mini equilibrium effect. It gives it like 30-30. You get 30% energy and 30% uh, health when you pick up a, an orb of the other type. So if you pick up a health orb, you get 30% of that as energy, or if you pick up an energy orb, you get 30% of that as health. So probably one violet, two of these yellows for energy uh, efficiency, and probably two blues for plus energy base, just, just a straight up plus energy pool. Um, now when I show this off, I'm not going to be using those because I don't want to switch my Archon Shards, and I like my pull build better. So I might have some energy issues just showing this off. So I might kind of like lean on those energy pads. But if you had the proper Archon Shards, it should feel a lot better. Um, because it's very energy hungry, you may also want to consider using Death Cube instead of Smita. But I, I don't think that's a good idea, again, because, you know, you're playing Necros. You're playing him to, to do loot farming. And Smita really helps with loot farming. So, I mean, if you really like the crowd control of this Lord Necros build, then maybe you want to switch to Death Cube. But I think the other pull build is better. But I, I just wanted to show this off because this is what I actually did most of my gameplay with is this Lord Necros build. So 
make sure I'm in it here, and then we'll show this disgusting creature off. Uh, I'm going to go into like a regular mission that has like grenades that can shoot stuff instead of just uh, infested. Kuva Fortress. Dab Uni. Scans show right. I'm gonna throw a pad down, get some energy. Set off the alarms to draw them out, then steal their Kuva catalyst. As expected, Grenier have shut down the environmental systems, sending modified life support capsules. I mean, these guys are pretty much at a standstill. And as soon as I pick up an energy orb, they're going to get knocked on their ass. It's actually so hard to even tell when they're getting knocked on their ass because the uh, the effect of them getting knocked on their ass is uh, is going to take a while. I just ran out of energy there. So there we go. They got hit with arcane eruption there. Um, let those back up. Let's see if we can get Arcane eru Eruption to proc while my Gloom is up. As you see, I'm having some energy issues because I don't have those Archon Shards on, unfortunately. And that's why I said on this build, you might want to use a Death Cube. Let me get some energy here so I can show this off a little bit better. Alright, so they're at a standstill, these guys. Let's try to get a... Uh, energy orb to come out. There we go. So that's the knockdown. They're actually getting knocked in their butt right now. He's not even on the floor yet. He'll eventually be on the floor. So that, that's why it turns into a, a, a very long uh, crowd control. Arcane Eruption plus Gloom is, is a disgusting crowd control. Um, this build is extremely energy hungry. And that's also why we don't go with more ranged mods, though. Because more ranged mods would, would increase the amount of targets affected and cost even more energy. So stretch is really all you want to be going for range mods. You don't want to go with any more range than that. Uh, this build will also... Combo with, um, actually, I was going to say the Tome, the Tome uh, Invocation or Canticle that gives you ener energy regeneration, but sometimes energy regeneration doesn't work when you have a channeled ability. So that, that might not combo with this build, actually. I don't know. I would have to test that, and I did not test that before this. Probably not, though. Most uh, energy regeneration doesn't actually uh, work when you have a channeled ability. So, you know, all these guys are just kind of chilling here. And that's what that's what this uh, Lord Necros build does. It just uh, just keeps him paused. You just need energy regeneration. That's your big thing. You want to be you, you need those Archon shards. As you see, I don't have those Archon shards uh, on this build right now because I, I'm using them for my other build and I have to keep turning off and on gloom. So you it where the the pull build you don't really even need Archon Shards. Just They're kind of just a quality of life if you can put them on. This one needs Archon Shards to really maintain its energy. Otherwise, you will be looking like this. You will be uh, like hunting for energy orbs. Five minutes and then we'll roll out. So this is the build that can do endurance because obviously it has a lot more survivability because it has um, lifesteal because of gloom and it also has a crazy amount of crowd control. But I don't believe this is the strongest Necros. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. This is the stronger Necros in the pull. But I don't believe this is the best way to play Necros because this has less loot potential than the other one. Um, so I, I would suggest, like, as a, as a person that's played Necros for a very, very long time, even though this one might look stronger, I actually suggest the pull build better. Uh, pull build more than, than this one. Just because you have 
you're using Necros for a reason, to get loot. And the pull build is going to get you more loot. You can use Smita confidently on the pull build. Where this one, it's like, oh, really, should I use Death Cube? Maybe I need some more energy. Because if you use Death Cube, you wouldn't even have any energy issues. He, he would just be pooping out energy orbs, Death Cube. You know, but then you're missing out on Smita. So... I wanted to show this off because this is what I spent most of my two or three thousand hours on. But I think this is not the best way to build Necros. It's a way to build them, and it's a strong way to build Necros. I just don't think it's the best way. Alright, let's head to Extraction. It'll be popping up in five seconds. My oh goodness, I gotta get out of this area. It's in there somewhere. I hate this area of the map so much. I'm not killing anymore, so I'm running out of energy. Alright, it's not this way. Maybe it's underneath. If you hate Kuba Fortress as much as me, please tell me in the comments. <laughs> At least that area, that one tile set. That one tile set is ridiculous. I'm pretty sure this also slows the Acolyte. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's also ridiculously slow. So this, this also just completely, you know, uh, trivializes the Acolyte fight as well. Nope, it's back, back the other way, I guess. It's probably inside. Yep. Of course, if you get uh, violence as the acolyte, he can shut you off. He can silence you and turn your ability off. Your will was greater. This is good. So those are the two Necros builds. I will just show them briefly. I'm not going to explain everything again, just because I spent a lot of time explaining it. But I'm just going to show them briefly and, you know, kind of give my conclusions. Okay, so Necros main here, the one with pull, I believe this is the correct way to be playing Necros. It doesn't have as long of a staying power as the Lord Necros build, but it is better at gathering loot, and that's the whole reason you're playing Necros. Lord Necros has more staying power. You know, you still can gather loot. Uh, it's just that you're, you're gathering it a lot less, and you are so energy hungry. With Archon Shards, it's going to help a lot. But even with Archon Shards, it might tempt you into using Death Cube. And if you're, you're tempted into using Death Cube and you take Smita off, that's even less loot gathering potential. So this is very strong, but I don't believe it is the correct way to play Necros. I think this one with Pull is the correct way to play him. So that is about it. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, give it a like. And I hope you guys have a good day. Take care. Bye.